Okay, uh, functions of the mind of Christ. What we are getting ready to do is we are going to break down those, those seven spirits, all right? The very first one is the spirit of the Lord. Okay, remember what we said in Hebrews, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 11. The very first, the very first spirit is the spirit of the Lord, being filled with the spirit of the Lord. And that's what Jesus had, all right? In Hebrew, it is called, it is pronounced Ruach. In Greek, it is pronounced Numa. You want me to spell that? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Hebrew, Ruach. R U W A C H. R U W A C H? Yes. In Greek, it is Numa. P N E U M A. That's the that? That's the Greek. Greek? Mm hmm. And the first one's Hebrew? Yes. This is the first spirit. The, the first, um, the first spirit, the spirit of the Lord from from Isaiah chapter eleven, when okay. I said what what Jesus operated with. Oh, okay. The first thing is the spirit of the Lord. Yeah, you can't operate with the wisdom, the godly wisdom itself, until you have the spirit of the Lord. All right. Was it defined? Numa. Numa. Was it defined? No. It's the 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 spirit of the Lord. It's it's his spirit. In, in medical terms, though, it has to do with lungs, so I take yeah. that as breath. Yeah, breath. Yeah, breath. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, it's the supernatural power source. Did y'all hear what she said? Okay. It is the supernatural power source that enables us to have God's supernatural thoughts. All right? It's the Holy Spirit's mission to produce this mind in us. As we stay yielded so that we can become living epistles... The mind of Christ is a process by which the sevenfold spirit of God becomes a reality in our lives. The mind of Christ is a process by which the sevenfold spirit of God becomes a reality in our own lives. Think about a reality show. So daily as you renew your mind with the spirit of the Lord, you become like a reality show. All right. Salvation occurs when the Lord lights the candle of our spirit. When our spirit is no longer in darkness, all right, but we are only enabled to see clearly as we allow God to give us his light through the mind of Christ. Let me say that again. When salvation occurs, God lights a candle in our spirits, so we're no longer in darkness. So our spirit man is no longer in darkness. You got to get that. We're not in darkness whatsoever. Ain't no darkness in the spirit man at all. It's already illuminated. With the, with the light, okay? So when the Lord lights the candle of our spirit, all right, and we're no longer in darkness, but we are, we are only able to see clearly through our own natural eyes when we have the mind of Christ, when we allow God to consistently keep that candle lit, when we're constantly renewing our minds, then we're able to actually see clearly through these eyes, all right? Because we're not looking through our natural eyes, we're looking through our spiritual eyes. Okay, in Proverbs 20, verse 27, it says, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. In the uh, Jewish Bible, it says the human spirit is a lamp of Adonai. It searches one's inmost being. So our spirit man is searching, because it's the candle of the Lord, it's searching everything on the inside of us to see what is not like God. So any dark area, any, any mm -hmm. dark matter, as Ron Cosmo said on, on Sunday, any dark matter that's in here, our spirit man is searching all of those areas. It's illuminating those areas, not for us to ignore it, it's illuminating it, so that we can give it over to the Lord and that thought process can be changed. Mm -hmm. Alright? Mm -hmm. Not to ignore it. So anytime something happens, you can't always say it's the devil. It could very well be God's light mm -hmm. illuminating the inside to expose any darkness or any hidden area, any hidden agenda on the inside of us. So that the enemy won't be able to have a, a hold on you. So he can't go before the Lord and say, see, I told you, look at me. With, <clears throat> that, that's really good. When, um, if, we, if we take any situation, instead of blaming the devil. Yes. A, 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 or blaming, uh, you know, instead of blaming anybody or mm -hmm. anything. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, can, we, can, we can say, okay, God, mm -hmm. what 
is what is it that you are wanting me to learn in this situation? Yes, that's yeah. it. Yes, that's it. Yes, that's right. That's right. Because as you said, yes. God will use negative things or yes. negative yes. people to yes, highlight will. things. Yes. The devil will. will do what he can to kill, steal, and destroy. Yes. And then people will do, and then we do our own. Yes. So in any situation, and rather than blaming any one of them, right. take the opposite effect. Yes. Uh, uh, the enemy wants to bring everything to negative, so take the positive and say, okay, well, this is happening and it's not much fun. Right. But God, right. what is it that you what want me it? to learn it's out of it so yes. that I could be transformed into your image? Yes, yes. expose, expose yes. it. Yes. And we're constantly saying, you know, if you're saying, I'm yielding myself to the Lord, I'm surrendering myself to the Lord, then he has to expose those hidden yes. agendas on the inside. Any dark place, it has to be exposed. It's not about the other, pl other person. Mm -hmm. It's about exposing what's on the inside of us so that we become more like Christ. Yes. So that we really begin to really walk in the Spirit the way we're supposed to walk in the Spirit. So there won't be any devil mindedness you know okay yeah, um, in Acts 17 uh, chapter 17 <coughs> verse 27 it says for in him I live and move and have my being in Christ we live and by the Holy Spirit we are enabled to move we are empowered to move and we have our being in the Father because everything comes from daddy everything comes from daddy everything 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 comes from him all right, everything. The um, Holy Spirit is the name is also the name of Adonai. You got to know that. And a lot of times, because we ignore the Holy Spirit, I mean, a lot of us we really do ignore the Holy Spirit, and He really is the person. I mean, this you really he is the person. I mean, you want to move of God, you can't have it without mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. It's, it really he is. He is the person. I mean, He is. He's the one that shows us that God is omnipotent, that He's omnipresent. I mean, he's the one that shows us that he's the great creator. I mean, he shows us the passion of God. He really is a person. And that's why God listed him as being first, the spirit of the Lord. Because he's the one that exposes everything. Jesus did say that he will lead and guide us into all truth. I'm leaving you another comforter. He's the one. Mm -hmm. He's going to show you everything. Everything that you need to know. He'll explain everything to you. You will understand everything because of Him. And the Holy Spirit is me and my Father. That's what He's saying. It's me and my Daddy. So you won't ever be separated from us. You will always, that's how you will know things that are going to come. That's how you will understand it is through Him. It's through Him. So you got to recognize that He really is a person. First of all, he is a person. Don't try to bypass him. Because you can't get to daddy and you can't stay up in the heavenlies, in the holy of holies, without Holy Ghost. So we can't bypass him. He's important. He's the most important person in this. In being able to have wisdom and understanding. You got to understand it's going to come through Holy Spirit. And it's not going to come any other way. And that means that you have to give him the respect that is due him. Because he deserves respect. He's a person. He is a person. Just like we are. And when you recognize that we are spirit beings, then you begin to understand and respect who the Holy Ghost is. Because he's spirit also. He's spirit also. So give him the respect that's due him. If you want the rest of the stuff, you got to give him what is due him so that the word of God can manifest the way it's supposed to manifest. All right? What is Okay. Now, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on the spirit of the Lord. Um, let's go to the spirit of wisdom. All right? Uh, the spirit of wisdom in Hebrew is called Chakma. Chakma. C H O C K. M A now first of all I had to ask y'all why y'all want to write that down? Y'all gonna go look it up some? It just sound good, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> it, just, I'm just, it just sounds good, don't it? Don't it just sound good? It, just, it, it sounds tasteful. It's yeah, that's a chocolate. It just sounds good. <laughs> Makes you want to say, oh, taste it and see it is chocolate. <laughs> that makes me think of a, a, a warrior. <laughs> oh, that's good. 
That's good too. Warrior. Okay, that's good. Chocolate it's is a warrior really, too. It keeps really, you up and down. <laughs> In Greek, it is Sophia. Ooh. And it's spelled the same way, S-O-P-H-I-A. That is the word for wisdom, the spirit of wisdom. Okay, in mm. Hebrew and in Greek. Okay, The spirit of wisdom is all of God's supernatural thoughts themselves. Matthew 4 and 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. <coughs> his word is his wisdom. These are seeds implanted within our minds. Paul said that one planted, another watered, but God gives the increase. So it's our job to read the word and plant that on the inside of our mind. And when we do what we're supposed to do, then God's going to do what only he can do and cause an increase. When we do what we need to do. All right? Proverbs 4 and 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all your getting... Get understanding. Get understanding. Don't miss that part. That's the same thing in school. When, when we were learning things, the whole thing is that some of the things that we learned, we didn't get an understanding of it. We just learned the format, the formula right. of it. But we didn't understand why in the world are we doing it this way. We didn't understand when God said, no, I don't want you to do that. I don't want you to just ask me for wisdom. I don't want you to just get wisdom and you don't understand how my wisdom operates. Because I have given you the ability to understand me. That's what he's saying, all right? In Hebrews chapter 8, verses 10 and 11, it says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. None of them shall teach his neighbor, and none his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, from the least of them to the greatest. In other words, he's saying, look, it's not predicated on somebody teaching you. It's predicated on it's not predicated on a person teaching you. It's predicated on the Holy Spirit teaching you. Cuz see, I can I can sit here and give you what God has given me, but you won't get understanding and you won't get revelation unless the Holy Spirit instructs you. He has to instruct you. Otherwise, it's just a whole bunch of head knowledge that you're getting and it won't do anything. Mm -hmm. So it has to be the Holy Spirit that begins to instruct you so that you know how to utilize what God is teaching you. All right? Uh, God's wisdom can't be bought or earned. His wisdom is and must be the foundation of our lives. We have to build our life on God's wisdom. It can't be built on knowledge and it certainly can't be built on power because it's going to fall. It has to be built on wisdom. All right? Uh, God's wisdom is his super... Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Proverbs 24 and 3 says, Through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. God's word must be our substance, our nourishment, our food, as well as our life's bread. All right? Now, if he said... That the house is built through wisdom. Then we have to stop trying to build it out of a whole bunch of other materials. Because it's going to fall. It is going to fall. And I'm going to say this again. No matter how much knowledge you build up. No matter how many degrees you get. No matter how many certificates you get. If you build in your house on that. It is going to crumble. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. It has to be built on God's wisdom. And you can utilize other tools to help you. But it must be built on His wisdom and His wisdom alone. Don't try to build it on man's wisdom. It's not going to stand. I don't care how good it sounds. It's a guarantee that it is not going to stand. It's not going to last. It's not going to last. Just had a flash of the three little pigs. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Building their homes. Yes, yes, and yes. All of them being destroyed. See? Yes, yes. We grow only in proportion to the daily diet of God's word that we are eating. Jesus daily ate of the words of his father. His diet consisted 
of what he heard his father saying and what he saw him doing. I'm going to say that again. You only grow in proportion to your daily diet of God's word. So depending on how much you eat, you know, and sometimes, and, and actually I don't even really like using that word. Because actually diet, you know, even with diet, there's certain kinds of diets and diets are not good for you, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, you can have some people who are on starvation diets and they do the same thing with the word. So even if you find yourself vacillating in, in the diet area, going from this way to this way, I'm going to eat this way, and I'm going to eat this way, and I'm going to eat this way. If you look at your spiritual life, more than likely your spiritual life is the same way your natural life, you're leading your natural life. So if you're constantly going from diet to diet, from this food to this food, from that food to that food, I'm going to do it this way, I'm going to do it that way. Your spiritual life is doing, your spirit man is doing the exact same thing. It's doing the exact same thing. Because that's what you're doing in your natural, because your natural mind is not aligned, come into agreement with the mind of Christ. So it has to, it has to come into agreement. It, that's why God keeps saying, renew your mind, renew your mind, renew your mind, renew your mind. Renew your mind, renew your mind, renew your mind, so that he can lead and guide you in the way, that, the best way that you need to go for your life. All right? Uh, okay. Um, where's I at? What did I say? Okay. He existed solely by the wisdom of his Father. So, so too are we to do the same. All right? In other words, only as we allow the Word of God to go down into our innermost part and begin to change and transform our lives will we ever truly experience what the Scripture means when it says, Thy words were found and I did eat them. That's from Jeremiah chapter 15, verses 16. Okay? So only when we allow it to go down into the innermost part, and that's with renewing the mind, when we allow the word that's going in to begin to operate on the inside of us, then you really can truly say, I found your words. I found them and I liked them. They really tasted good. They, they tasted real good. But because sometimes when we're eating of the word of God, and it doesn't seem like it tastes very good because we really don't. Because we're thinking with our natural mind as in we'll be eating the word and then we start thinking about, okay, I did this, I did that, I messed up here. Why did I do that? Why did I act that way? So then we want to close the word up and we don't want to eat of it because it don't taste too good at that moment. When God is saying, but that's not how I talk to you. That's not, that, that is not, that's not what I said to you. That's not my, what my word said to you. It exposes that stuff in you like we talked about. It exposes that stuff, but at the prompt time of... Of exposing it, it also tells you who you are in it. <laughs> so that's you that's condemning yourself. I've justified you. You're condemning yourself through my word. But when you learn how to operate with those sevenfold spirits of God, then you'll learn that you're not going. You're no longer going to condemn yourself with God's word. Because his word is not condemnation. His word is life. It's righteousness. Yes. It's not condemnation. But we used it as a way to condemn ourselves. It was never meant for that. Condemnation is death. This is words of life. Yes. It's words of life. All right? When, when, um, when God allows trials in our lives, we don't understand what he requires of us. No, I went too far. We all have God's written wisdom lying in our hands, but many of us, because of busyness, distractions, hurts, but unbelief, and other self-centered thoughts and emotions, we don't take the time to sit at God's feet to listen and hear what he wants to say to us. I said that earlier um, when we were in praise and worship, that God said it's for some of you that you have not been taking the time out to sit at his feet, to get yeah. on your knees. You've been coming with your own agenda. As to what you want to do at that time. And he's saying, look, stop coming with your agenda. And just come to me without an agenda. And I'll give you agenda when you get in my presence. So stop allowing your busyness. And busyness and distractions and all that stuff. It causes us to come to God with our own personal agenda. And when you come to God with your own personal agenda, you can become so frustrated during that time because it's like, okay, how come I'm not hearing God? Why is he not saying anything to me? And then you'll find something in the word and then you'll start condemning yourself for something. When God's saying, look, look, get rid of all that stuff. Just, just stop doing that. Stop doing it. 
Just come to me free hearted. That's mm -hmm. what I want you to do. With nothing on your mind but me. That's it. And then I'll give you an agenda while you're there. I'll let you know. I'll lead and guide you through my spirit as to what I want you to do mm -hmm. during that time. All right? Um, let's say, instead we depend upon what we think or feel. Oh, never mind. Uh, when God allows trials in our lives, we don't understand what he requires of us, nor how to act because we do not have a revelation of his word concerning the situation. That's why he's saying, come to him without an agenda. Because when you come to him without an agenda, he already knows what you're going through. He knows the situation that you're in. And when you come to him without an agenda, then he can give you a revelation concerning your situation so you'll know how to handle it. But if I come to him with an agenda, looking for an answer right then, when God is saying, but that's really not your problem. You think that's the problem. The problem is really something else. And I'm what God is doing right now. Why? Because in embracing what you're doing right now, he'll give you the keys to be able to pray and see a breakthrough in that unsaved person's life. That's right. Mm. But you got to embrace what he's doing. Jesus. Because you need the keys in order to do that. And the keys only come through that divine sevenfold spirit of God. So you need those keys. You need the key to wisdom. You need the key to understanding. It will unlock every door. Every single door. And God, this is God's promise to you. If you embrace it, you will have the key. And watch the minute you open your mouth concerning that unsaved loved one. They're going to fall on their knees and give their lives to Christ. Because you'll have the wisdom and the understanding. And you'll have the right counsel from God to know what words to say. Because it won't be your words. It'll be the Holy Ghost speaking through you. That's his promise to you. Embrace what he's doing. Embrace what he's doing. Embrace it. With everything that's in you, you need to embrace it. And know something is getting ready to break. Something powerful is getting ready to happen. But that's only if you embrace it. Only if you embrace it. So you have to choose to do that. And stay in that stream of what God is doing. Stay in that front place of what God is doing. You stay in that place. And watch things begin to happen. Watch things begin to happen. Watch them begin to happen. And one more thing. Start praying in the spirit more. When you run up against a situation, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Stop trying to come up with your own words as to what to pray. Your spirit man prays the perfect prayer. Pam says that all the time. He prays the perfect prayer. I've heard Creflo Dollar say that. It prays the perfect prayer. The perfect prayer. It won't miss anything. So pray in the spirit. Stop trying to come up with words to say. Pray in the spirit. Pray in your unknown tongue. So you can pray the perfect prayer. And watch God give you what you need, your answer, for whatever that situation is. Watch the atmosphere change because you prayed the perfect prayer. So the strong, the more you pray in the spirit, the closer you become to God because you're spending more time talking to him instead of talking to everybody else. You know? <laughs> everybody else. You know, so and we spend, I mean, if you look at your life, I'm sure if you evaluated it, you would look at you probably spend maybe 50% of the time talking to the Lord, some people, other 50% talking to people. Some people is 75, 25, 75 to other people, 25% to the Lord. No. He said you need to spend more time talking to him. Because your spirit. You ain't flesh. Your spirit. So if I'm spirit, then why am I spending more time talking to flesh? Than I am talking to the Spirit of God. We have longer conversations with each other than we do with Jesus. That's true. I mean, seriously. And then we had a nerve enough to start praying and even praying in unknown tongues. I had a nerve enough to get tired. Whoo! My tongue is tired. My, my, my jaws hurt. They don't hurt when you're talking to somebody else. I 
mean, seriously, think about it. Your jaw start hurting and everything. But when you're having a conversation with somebody else, you can talk to them one, two hours. That ain't no problem. You ain't tired whatsoever. You just keep on going. Like the energizer bunny. <laughs> Why? That's because we're not exercising our spirit man. So you got to exercise your spirit man. Pray in your unknown tongue more than what you have been. More than what you have been. That's just even going throughout the day. You know, I say that all the time. While you're washing dishes, going down the steps, washing clothes, where maybe putting on clothes, just spraying your unknown tongue. That's just talk to the Lord. He likes to have conversations. He really does. He loves to talk. He really does love to talk. I mean, a lot. So just pray. So you can talk, talk to him all the time. He's right there. He's on the inside of us. So why not talk to him? Why ignore him? You know, until some point in time. No, you talk to him all the time. All the time. Because he's waiting to have a conversation. He also wants us to sit, be still. Yes. We, <clears throat> wait, that's the part that's really neglecting. Mm -hmm. And he showed me, and, um, and I've gotten in my own walk with him, I, where I don't even put music on. Mm, yeah. I just sit in yep. a quiet place. Yes. If it's early in the morning. Yes. Where there's no sound, no noise, no distractions. Yes. And I don't even put music because sometimes yep. that even gets you distracted. It, you know, you start singing or something. Mm -hmm. And I just you sit quietly without yep. speaking with the, my Bible, with a pad yes. of paper or pencil. And then yes. just wait for him to, to say whatever. And sometimes he, there's nothing. Right. But it's it's not easy. Yeah. It takes some time because yeah, you, you always want to get up and do something. Yep. It's almost like you have to hold on to the That's seat. true. Yeah, because it's like at that time is when <clears throat> the phone rings after you sit there all day and you're <clears throat> called or all of a sudden you remembered all the things that you was trying to remember an hour ago. <laughs> and all the things that you need to be doing. and I'm, I'm, So it's oh, like you have to get your... Oh, yeah. I remember what I was thinking about last week. Now <laughs> I remember. Just, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and, and if you to, don't yeah, sit yeah. there and, and get in that place, you'll make sure you do. Mm -hmm. He'll yeah. let you sit at home for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, That's right. Yes, you will. Mm. Yes, so you, you will. Take that, gotta take that time. You won't let your car break down so you yeah. don't have one for a week. Yeah. You gotta take that time out. Yep. And if you, I mean, if you find your mind wandering uh, like that, like she was saying, it really is because you're not spending enough time renewing your mind. The mind only wanders because you don't spend enough time renewing it. Wow. And when you renew your mind and you get into the presence of the Lord, you're trying to get into His presence even more, more strongly. When your mind is renewed, your mind, you won't find your mind wandering in all those yeah. different things, thinking about this and thinking about that and thinking about <laughs> Because the only thing you're going to be thinking about is being in the presence of the Lord. So it's because you're not spending enough time renewing your mind. And renewing your mind is not just reading the Word. That's You can read the Word, but the Word has to begin to work on the inside. Yeah. I can read it, but is it is it working on the inside? Is it changing anything on the inside? And it has to work. It has to change what's on the inside of me. In order for my mind to be renewed, it has to change my thinking. Because that's what repentance is. Change. That's renewing the mind. Change. Change from the wrong way of thinking to the right way of thinking. So, if your one mind is wandering, it's because you're not spending enough time in the Word renewing your mind. You're not changing your thoughts. Your, your old thoughts are not dying. You know, and you're not putting enough importance. So, there's not enough importance on your time with the Lord. You know, you, you, you're placing more importance on uh, doing other things. Now, now, don't become frustrated by that. That's, that's not the thing. Don't become frustrated by it. Because if you find your mind <coughs> wandering, then you have the ability and the power to command your mind to come back yes. into alignment and yes. agreement. So don't become frustrated by it. Because he's not saying, I don't want you to, con don't condemn yourself because your mind is wandering. It's a learning process. It's a learning process. So when it wanders, then you just bring it back to where it's supposed to be. Yeah. You have the power and the authority to do that. Just bring it back. The reason why that really stood out for me was because um, I kept thinking whenever I first started all that, I'm like, why in the world? And that's what it was, is because you and you have to learn to shut down 
that phone and shut thing and, and just shut the door and go. I've turned off the lights and everything. I mean, just to really. But yeah. <clears throat> I heard Joyce Myers talk about whenever her husband Dave would be talking to her, mm -hmm. and you know, and then she'd have to go back and she'd say, "Can you repeat that?" Because my mom was wondering. wondering yeah. And I didn't hear what you said. Yeah. Well, what do you think we're doing when we say yeah. about God? Yeah. You know, right. can you repeat that? <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you gonna ask me to repeat it? <laughs> you should have been paying attention. Right. So we right. have to learn to shut off and refocus our minds. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that yeah, yes. that was been that was a big That's thing good. for me is to yeah. learn to refocus our yeah. mind. Mm -hmm. you know, as Michelle was saying, you know, bring it back, bring it back. It reminded me of when um that show was on the nanny or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she was training the parents to get her kids to behave. Yeah. And it was put them in time out. Mm -hmm. And the kids would get right back up off the chair. You take them, put them right back right. on the chair. Yeah. They get right back up, you take them right. Yeah. And then after a time, the child finally got it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I got to sit here. So we got to take our mind, put it on the time out. <laughs> and when it wants to get up, we go right back. Just that same process is yeah. kind of. Yeah, 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 true. Yeah, that is true. That is true. And it'll change that behavior. So that old way of thinking will begin to die out. You know, so they know, just like he is, they know, okay, I can't do that anymore. So that whole, that whole behavior is died out. It just changes. It changes to a new behavior. And that's what he wants us to do. All right? Any more comments?